So finasteride is a drug that has two major uses within the medical world. The first use is in the treatment of a condition called benign prostatic hypertrophy, or BPH for short. This is a condition that affects older men. So as men age, the prostate gland gets larger and larger, and this is what we call benign prostatic hypertrophy. And the reason that this is an issue is that the glandular tissue can encroach inwards on the prostatic urethra that runs through it and can cause it to become narrower and narrower. And this can cause problems with passing urine. So older men can often develop problems with passing urine due to BPH. Now, finasteride can be given in 5 milligram tablets once daily for the treatment of BPH and it works to actually shrink the prostate gland down. This is the first major use of the drug finasteride, and a famous brand name for the 5 milligram tablets of finasteride is Proscar, and this is branded and used for the treatment of BPH. And it's given 5 milligrams, and this stands for once daily. Finasteride's second major use, which is the topic for this video, is in the treatment of androgenic alopecia, which is also called male pattern baldness. This is the common form of hair loss experienced by most men within the world. And it begins in the late teenage years and continues and progresses throughout adulthood. Finasteride, as well as being effective at shrinking the prostate gland down, is also effective at stopping this type of hair loss. For this indication, it's given in a smaller dose, it's given in tablets that contain only one milligram, and again it's given once daily. And an example of a famous brand of finasteride one milligram tablets is the drug Propecia, and this is marketed for the treatment of androgenic alopecia. So this drug is a tablet and it's taken once daily, and it needs to be taken indefinitely, and if it is taken reliably, it will stop the progression of further hair loss in most men who take it. Now, it does need to be taken indefinitely if you want the effect to continue. So if you were to take it for a year, it would likely stop the progression of hair loss from the start of the treatment. But when you stop taking it, then the hair loss would restart. So it doesn't cure the process, it controls the process whilst you're actually on the drug. And it is remarkably effective. It usually does stop further hair loss. In some people, it even causes regrowth of the hair that's already been lost. It works by blocking the activity of an enzyme that's all over the body called 5-alpha reductase. Now, this enzyme is involved in converting the hormone testosterone, the male sex hormone, the main androgen hormone, into a more active form called dihydrotestosterone that is more powerful at activating the androgen receptor. Now, the main androgen that drives hair loss in men, the main androgen that drives androgenic alopecia is dihydrotestosterone. So by reducing the level of this hormone within the body, you can stop or significantly reduce the hair loss process. Propecia can be prescribed by both primary care physicians and dermatologists. However, the main way that most men get it now in the modern world is from online doctors in the form of online pharmacists. So all over the world, in growing numbers, there are online pharmacists where you can log on to your computer, go onto a website just by searching on Google, buy finasteride, uh, and then you can place an order for some of these one milligram tablet finasteride tablets. One of the doctors that works for these online companies will then prescribe the drug for you, a pharmacist that works for that company will then dispense it and it will be sent in the mail to you and arrive on your doorstep. The drug is now so cheap that buying it on an online pharmacist is not that expensive at all. In the UK, I believe you can go on to online pharmacists and get a six month supply of Propecia 1mg tablets for around £60 and that will be delivered to your doorstep. When you compare that to, for instance, trying to get the drug on the NHS, even though the NHS is free, when you think about the actual process of getting it prescribed, you're going to have to go to your GP, and your GP might be very unwilling to prescribe this medicine. It might not be a medicine that they're comfortable with. Two, it is a cosmetic 
problem androgenic alopecia and they are putting you on a medicine uh, indefinitely that might cause side effects. So they might not be comfortable with prescribing it. So they might want to refer you instead to a dermatologist for them to consider prescribing you it. You then have to wait four months for a routine dermatology appointment and then finally get the dermatologist to prescribe it to you. And again, you'll have to convince them that it's necessary because it's a cosmetic problem. So you'll have to convince them all about how it's upsetting you and affecting your quality of life. So to avoid all of this, many men prefer to just buy it on the internet. In addition, if you're young and healthy in the UK, even though the prescription will be free, actually picking it up from a pharmacy and getting it dispensed will cost you £9 because you won't be exempt from those charges. And usually uh, NHS doctors will only prescribe two months at a time, so you'll have to pay £9 for every two months supply. When you add on the chart, the cost of getting to these doctor's appointments, potentially going to see a dermatologist, the cost of petrol uh, and or the cost of getting a bus ticket, when you add on all that cost, it might be no more expensive to just buy it on an online pharmacist and certainly a lot less back. So overall, the main way that most men source this is through online pharmacists. So let's finish just by talking briefly about side effects. So the pros of the drug are, of course, that it does work. Most men experience a cessation of hair loss. If not full cessation, then at least it will slow the process down. And some lucky people even get regrowth of hair that's already been lost. The cons of the drug, there are two major side effects that can, people can experience. The first is people can experience psychological effects. So the mechanism of the drug, remember, is blocking this enzyme 5-alpha reductase, which converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. So you get a drop in dihydrotestosterone within the body when you take this medication. Now, these hormones affect the brain, and therefore taking this medicine, disturbing the male endocrine system, can have psychological effects. Now, some people actually report good psychological effects from taking the drug. They report, for instance, reduced aggression, feeling calmer, less angry when taking this medicine. However, other people experience negative psychological effects and say that it has significantly decreased their mood and that they are depressed taking the drug. And if that occurs, it will be a reason that they will want to stop taking the medication. The other major side effect that is becoming more and more famous is erectile dysfunction, ED. So again, the drug is affecting the male endocrine system. Uh, and one of the effects that some people will experience, most people won't experience this, but some men who take it do experience, is problems getting an erection. This is usually a side effect that if you do experience it, will go away once you stop taking the medicine. However, there are a number of cases that have received a lot of media attention where people stop taking the medicine and even after months and months of being off it, they still are struggling from erectile dysfunction and these are young men. And there are studies now in male rats showing that this drug might actually change the histological appearance of penis tissues under the microscope and that this might mean that it can cause a permanent change in the penis and how the penis functions and therefore it may be the case that in some men it is capable of causing long-term changes in the penis that lead to long-term erectile dysfunction. So to summarise, it is a fantastic drug. It does work. Most people won't experience side effects, but the two major side effects that people do sometimes experience is one, psychological, mainly depression, and two, problems with getting an erection. Usually, if that occurs, it will reverse when you stop taking the drug. However, there are a group of people who say that they have taken this drug and then had permanent changes in the penis, and even though they've been off it for years, still cannot sustain an erection, and these, as I say, are young men generally. So be aware that that is a possible side effect from taking this drug, but most people won't experience that.